I have had a mild heart condition. Um, it's mitral valve prolapse with moderate regurgitation. And on the EKG was an inverted T waves. Um, and none of those things are anything really severe or anything that would affect my everyday living. Um, it was very mild, very moderate. So back in September, um, we had a pig show up on our land. We bring this pig home and I said, well, I'm gonna take this pig on a, on a walk. I put the pig on a leash and walked him around the yard and I thought I was having a good old time. And I come on in the house and I'm sitting on the couch and next thing I know, my wife is mad at me. In doing so, he stepped in the pig mess because pigs go to the bathroom several times <laughs> in an hour and so he stepped in it and walked into our house and brought the mess into our house and in doing so he let my dog Snoopy outside when he was coming inside and I brought Snoopy back inside and found out he had rolled all in the pig mess so here it was 11 o'clock at night I had to give my dog a bath and try to get to bed and wake up to work out and go to work the next day. It just went further than it should have. Just those silly things that um, it just goes too far. The next morning, we both got up, got ready for work, and we both left, um, didn't speak. So I called him that morning to let him know that I found a home for Jolene the pig, and he didn't answer. And I didn't answer it on purpose because I was still aggravated. So I got to the gym that morning. Um, I do CrossFit boot camp. I do it every morning. So our workout group, I guess, is usually around 10 of us um, at 8.30 in the mornings here. We, we all come in as a group, and then we kind of break down into little groups as we go through the day. And Jen's always kind of my partner in that. The last I remember um, working out, we had two workouts to do and we were holding a weight over our head and we had to walk back and forth and then we had to do burpees. We had to go up on a box and get down and do burpees. And I saw her just kind of sit down on the, the blue mat here and initially I just thought oh she must have hurt her knee doing the exercise that she's doing. And the room as I looked around it was like everything was kind of in slow motion there for a second like it was like everybody froze in time, like we didn't know what to do, we didn't know what was going on, and then it was like everything was going like a million miles an hour. We thought she was having a seizure, so we were like, hey, let's give her some space, keep her safe. Um, in a few minutes, she's going to wake up from this and be okay, but um, then we realized that her body was not rigid anymore. She didn't look like she was really having a seizure anymore. I checked her pulse, and that's when we found out that she did not have a pulse, and so we started CPR on her. Um, we got her hooked up to the AED. And in those moments, I was still just thinking, okay, we have an AED. If it needs to shock her, it will. She's gonna be okay. Um, she was so calm. So I was praying there with her, Brooke and I, until Brooke kind of said, you need to pray harder. And in the back of my, my mind, I knew that the longer this goes on, the longer I have to give her CPR, the more time she has to be shocked. In the back of my mind, I just knew from my medical background that this is not looking good and she needs she needs to come back soon. Then I got another phone call and it was her friend. And she says, well, she's on the floor and we're trying to revive her right now. When I got to the gym, she was laying on the ground and uh, she said a few grunts, but she wasn't there. I, I became frightened um, in that moment because I realized that my friend Jim was gonna die and um, we were all gonna watch that happen. And so I knew that if we could all gather around her and pray that there's strength in that and that we were gonna fight whatever fear we were feeling and we were gonna fight whatever the enemy thought was gonna happen that day and we were gonna just glorify God. And sometimes I feel like we tiptoe a little bit about our faith when you come to a gym because you think well people don't come here for Jesus they come here for you know to work Exercise, out yeah. yeah and so in that moment um, yeah. when I cried out for prayer I didn't care where you stood I wanted you to stand with Jesus at that moment and so that to me was so profound that he used that sweet girl right there to woo everybody in this room just for him I opened my eyes and I couldn't realize that I was in an ambulance, I heard the sirens, and then I realized it was just a closed-in space, and I just saw a man standing over me, and I thought, well, that's me. You know, 
how can that be me? It can't be me. That's whenever I pulled in the emergency room and um, she was getting wheeled in. The EMS man, he was like, Dwayne, we got her back. She's, she's, she's talking, she's, we got her back. I got to the emergency room um, and the other thing that I remember is them trying to take the oxygen off of me. Um, and I still just kept thinking, you know, what happened? Like, this can't be me. This can't be going on. You know, not, I'm young. I'm a wife. I'm a mother. Like, this can't be happening to me. So as things went on, I just, I knew I was in excruciating pain. Um, my chest hurt so bad. And it was just really hard to wrap my head around everything that was going on. The staff just kept reassuring me I'm okay. Um, and then with everything that I went through, they kept saying that, you know, it's a miracle. They couldn't believe the condition that I was in um, when I got to the hospital. Um, they said most people aren't responsive, aren't awake. Um, and they even will lower their body temperature to try to preserve any brain activity that remains if they have any. I was um, in the hospital for eight days. Um, and throughout those eight days was a lot of testing. And then it just got to the point that they didn't know what else was wrong and they wanted to send me home. Um, and I was scared. I didn't want to go home not knowing what was wrong. Um, scared of it happen again. Um, so after the hospital stay, I had to have my follow-up appointments with my primary doctor, the cardiologist, and the surgeon. And I remember going to my primary physician, and he said, you realize you're lucky to be here. Like, you should not be here talking to me after what you went through. When you go into cardiac arrest, um, the chances of survival with CPR is only like 12%. Um, and then the chances of survival without any, you know, affecting your brain functions um, is 5% of that 12%. Um, so just surviving that with CPR and surviving and still having any functioning activity at all is very low. I can't do that math. <laughs> 5% of 12%. <laughs> Everything that I had before um, with the mitral valve prolapse, it, I did have like a moderate regurgitation and now it's very mild. It's not very much regurgitation and with an inverted T wave, that's normal. So it's everything with my heart that I had issues with before aren't an issue anymore. Um, looking back, I'm able to see how much God had played and that he planned that whole day. He planned everybody to be there. Um, I know Brooke had said she wasn't planning on working out that day, but she still showed up. And to have Debbie there and all the other girls there to pray over me. Um, to go through all the people and all the steps and to now have even a better heart than I had to start with. It's kind of reset everything in my life. And God brought a new beginning the day my life ended.